I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. I'm Jason Plummer, State Senator from Illinois' 54th State Senate District. I'm joined with State Senator Terry Bryant and State Senator Steve McClure. We make up the minority representation of the Executive Appointments Committee. Um, what we just experienced in this committee room behind me is not just unacceptable, it's dangerous for the people of Illinois. We're extremely disappointed that the chair of the Executive Appointments Committee declined to call the governor's appointments to the Prison Review Board here in committee. These same appointees were voted not once, not twice, uh, unanimously in the State Senate to be called and posted in this committee hearing. Yet after two unanimous votes by the State Senate, the chair of the committee, doing the bidding of the governor, elected not to, not to bring them to the committee today. We had the director for the Department of Corrections, the person responsible for keeping our DOC personnel, our public, and our prisoners safe and behind bars. He was here answering tough questions, but the people appointed by the governor who haven't appeared before the Senate for questions, who are releasing dangerous criminals willy-nilly out there on the streets of our communities, couldn't appear today. This committee and the Senate have a constitutional duty to review the governor's appointees. We have an obligation to do our job. How much longer are the people of Illinois, how much longer is the state legislature going to sit by while Governor Pritzker, the most dangerous governor in America, has appointees who are unaccountable to the legislature, who has appointees who are releasing people on the streets of this state that we can't find in some instances, cop killers, sexual assault, rapists, child molesters being released, and yet the people doing that won't appear before the state senate. The Democrat majority won't call them and will not do their constitution, constitutional duty because apparently the governor's checkbook is more important than the people living in their districts. You mark my words, people in Illinois will be harmed by some of these people who are being released. And when that harm happens, when someone is sexually assaulted, when someone is robbed, when someone is murdered, and the, the family of the victims come before the legislature and say, what were you doing? I'll be able to say we asked, we asked, we asked, but the governor would not let the Senate majority call them for questions, and the Senate majority was apparently too concerned about the governor's feelings than to do their constitutional duty. What just happened in here is unacceptable, it's dangerous, and we have to do everything we can as, as elected officials, as the media, and as the people that see this, to make sure that these people are held, account, held to account for the deci decisions that are being made. And with that, I'll take questions. We're going to give the, the members of the majority one last time on the floor of the Senate today to, uh, to, to post these folks and, and allow them to be brought to the floor of the Senate for a vote. We're going to give them one last chance. But we've already given them numerous chances. And by the actions today, they've proven that they don't really care about the public safety aspect of this. They only care about the political aspect of this. Let, let's be clear about one other issue, too. This isn't just not listening to the people of this state or not listening to the three of us, twice, twice the Illinois Senate voted to make those individuals come before this committee today. And the chairman of the committee apparently didn't listen to any part of any of that. So not only are they thwarting the, 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 what is required by the Constitution, what is demanded by the people of Illinois, but they're also thwarting the entire Senate of Illinois, both sides, in a very bipartisan way unanimously twice the people of this state and the chairman of that committee was told to bring these people before this committee and yet today we heard we heard everybody else that was supposed to be on the list just not the parole board what are they hiding from i mean we spent a week of sleepless sleeplessness i did because i worked with the very people who have been locked up and and every day had to go in and now see them out on the street who have no business out on the street a guy who was loose for a week. Imagine the victims of those crimes and the sleeplessness that they had because I didn't sleep for a week wondering where that guy was. It could have been in any one of our districts where that individual was loose. Was there a reason given on why the people were not called? Well, you'd have to ask the... the was there a reason given in the committee? No, no, no reason was given. And, and I want to be... Who's the chair? Uh, Senator Laura Murphy. And, and I want to be really clear about something, too. This isn't some gotcha uh, theatrics or something like this. We have asked on the floor of the Senate, 
We've asked multiple times in the committee. We've sent letters to them just simply saying we have a constitutional duty. Call these people so we can do our job, so we can ask questions of these people who are making life and death decisions, literally life and death decisions. You know, after numerous inquiries by me and by other members of our caucus, they still continue to stall and they still continue to do the bidding of the second floor instead of representing the people of their districts. And, and, Well, I think that we've got a lot of questions. We want to understand, you know, their decision-making process. We want to understand, you know, we've got a, a record of decisions they've made about violent criminals that they've let loose on the streets. I mean, li literally, uh, people who have murdered law enforcement personnel, people who have committed severe rapes, people who, who uh, child molesters. I mean, the, the, the list is long, and all of these people appear before these folks. They're appointed by the governor and they're supposed to appear before the Senate. We've had over 200 people come before the Executive Appointments Committee. We've asked them reasonable questions. We've approved, I think, all of them. Why are the prison review people not appearing before this committee? That's a question for the governor's office. That's a question for the Democrats on the committee, because we've asked dozens of times. Well, you may have been other members of that PRB, right? No, no, no. 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 71% of the members of the PRB have not appeared before the Senate to be questioned and to, to, uh, to present their case for why they should be serving in this role. 71% of them have not uh, appeared. I believe 10 of them were posted today. Uh, seven other people were posted. Those seven people appeared. The 10 members of the Prison Review Board did not appear. And when I inquired of the chair, she simply said she wasn't going to call them. And that's not acceptable to the people of Illinois. That's well, simply not acceptable. Why do you think they're not calling? Well, when you think about it, we've got members of the Prison Review Board who have had a staggering uh, lack of empathy for our victims and a total disregard for public safety. Would you want to come before our committee to answer questions about that? On top of that, they're being paid $90,000. I mean, think about that. You let somebody go who killed a 16-year-old while out on release from prison who, who raped a 14-year-old, who also w invaded the homes of women, stabbed one. I mean, the horrific, and you're getting paid $90,000 to let these people go and have no regard at all for the feelings of the victims. There are a massive amount of Democrats on this committee. There's a massive amount in the Senate. They should have the votes. The reason they're not being called, I would imagine, is because nobody wants to have to vote on these people. And that's pathetic because these victims have to live with these releases for the rest of their lives, and it's just not right. Appointing names have been withdrawn, reappointed, time and time again. What's really different about this scenario compared to other times where the appointment has been withdrawn and reappointed? Well, there, there's been circumstances in the past that have delayed someone from being able to appear. What we've seen here is an intentional act to continue to delay the appearance. They, they simply don't want them to appear before the media. They don't want them to appear before the committee because, frankly, I think they're embarrassed of the governor's appointees. They know they're bad appointees. But instead of standing up for their districts, instead of standing up for the people and the communities they come from, they're going to bow down to the governor and say, whatever you want. You've got a big checkbook, governor. You're the governor. We'll do whatever you want. Who cares what happens to the people in our communities? And, and, and this, again, this is something we've been asking for for weeks, weeks. And, and they will not bring them before the committee. And uh, it's, it's simply because they don't want to vote for them, but they don't have the courage to stand up to J.B. Pritzker. Keep in mind that just because these people haven't been confirmed doesn't mean that they're not still acting. Right? They are actively releasing people from prison right now. They're actively members of the, of the prison review board, and they've never been confirmed. 71% of the actual board has never come before the Senate for confirmation. That's unconscionable. Thank you, guys. Are there any um, consequences, essentially, for the chairman going back on the board? Well, I mean, I, I won't say that the chairman went, went, went back on her word. The Senate voted unanimously to have them posted, and she had the opportunity to call them, and, and she elected not to call them. And why she did that, I, I don't know um, the answer to that. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, here, put yourselves in our shoes. So we all represent a couple hundred thousand people. And you've got these violent criminals running loose. 
and people are choosing to release them from prison, uh, one of whom is a double murderer, I might add. So when I'm back home in my district and they say, well, wait a minute, Jason, so there's a double murderer appointed by the governor releasing violent criminals from prison and you haven't been able to question him. You have, you're, you're the minority spokesperson on executive appointments. You haven't forced him to the committee to, uh, to answer for his decisions, to answer for his deeds. What, what do you say to those people? The arrogance of the majority party, the disregard for public safety, and the way they've handled this process is a sham and should never happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.